This is a Concord University Library tutorial dealing with basic searching in EBSCO. To begin, let's start at the Concord University Library homepage at concord.edu slash library. Once there, scroll down below the picture and click on the databases button. As a reminder, if you're off campus and trying to use the databases, use the top link on the databases page that states for off-campus access, log in here with your MyCU username and password. Otherwise, go ahead and click EBSCO. Click on EBSCO host web to start. The next page loads up and you'll notice that EBSCO has a lot of individual resources from which you can search. It's much simpler, however, to simply check all of them before you begin. So go ahead and hit select all and hit continue. By default, EBSCO will start you in what's called a basic search. What we want to do is go ahead and begin in the advanced search. It gives you a few more options. So go ahead and click on the advanced search. It's right beside the basic search underneath the search bar. So you'll see me highlight this here. We'll go ahead and click that. And when it loads up, the first thing you should notice is the very top. You have several more search bars that you can pick from. Each one will allow you to select something specific if you like. Um, you have various fields that include the text, author, and title. Uh, for this example, we're going to leave it alone and we're simply going to type in the box. And when you do that, it treats it as a simple keyword search. Okay, let's go ahead and perform a search. You'll notice that as soon as I begin typing, other keywords will autofill. You can take these or not. Um, you can also populate the search bars with anything you like. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take their suggestion and go with gun violence. And you'll notice that at the very bottom of your screen, there are two boxes that you can normally check before you do an overall search, and that would be the full text. You'll notice me check it. And on the right side, you'll see the scholarly or peer-reviewed box that I can go ahead and check that. For this example, however, I really don't want to check those because I want you to see just how they affect your overall search results. So we're going to uncheck those, leave them blank, and we're going to go ahead and search. And when that loads up, you'll see a grand total of what looks like about 65,000 articles, a little too many to go through. So let's go ahead and limit that. On your left-hand side, you'll see the big refine results box. So under these, you've got several things that you can use to limit your results. And of course, one of them is full text. So we're going to go ahead and check that. And you'll notice that when I do, it updates automatically and drops the amount of results that you have. So now we've dropped over 10,000 results just on that one box. Let's go ahead and check the scholarly and peer-reviewed box. And you'll notice again, you'll notice another big drop. So now that we're less than 1,500. The last one that you really want to make sure and look at is your publication date slider bar. Now you can enter these in here, or you can simply slide them across. And for this example, I'm just going to slide them to within, say, the last five years, because typically that's what you'll have in your classes. Uh, they'll want the last five or ten years, the most recent articles, and you notice now we're less than a thousand. Yeah, you know, it's a lot more manageable and easier to go through. So now let's pick one that we can uh, load up here. And I'm going to pick one that's got, uh, shows you that it has HTML full text and a PDF full text option. If you have the option and the choice, always pick PDF full text. Uh, the biggest reason why is PDF tends to be the actual scan of the article and the HTML full text is the transcription of the article. So there is a possibility that some things may be misspelled. So it's often easier just to go with PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that. So now that we have a PDF on the screen, we're going to go ahead and pretend that it's one that we want to keep. So you have various options. And if you look at the very top bar and on the far right, you'll notice options that include printing and saving that are here and here. There's also a sidebar that you can expand and we're going to do so now. This gives you the option to even email it to yourself. So we're going to go ahead and click this email icon and you'll notice that it automatically fills in who it comes from, which is EBSCO. 
The only thing you really need to do is fill in your correct email information. You can also supply a subject and comments if you wish. It will automatically give you the HTML and the PDF by default. You can uncheck those if you wish and make sure and obviously send that to yourself. And it's a good way to keep your articles together. Some things to keep in mind while using the databases include starting with a broad topic before you narrow it, choosing a PDF over HTML format, always saving your articles, altering your search terms for different results, and of course using our interlibrary loan service whenever you can't find a full text article. Thank you for watching. If you need further assistance, please email or call us. 304-384-5371 or email us at library at concord.edu. Thank you.